Scarlet Witch issue number eight. That's right, folks. Somehow, for some reason, eight issues into a Scarlet Witch run, I'm still genuinely surprised, blown away of the talent behind the scenes, and think it's the best book Marvel's producing. I think this is one of the best of the run so far. From a near-perfect run, there have been no misses, really. There's been issues and moments you're like, yeah, I guess we did that. But every single issue has been different. It's dealt with different parts of Wanda's identity and who she is. And this one connects her to a character that she surprisingly doesn't have like a huge history with. There is connective tissue between them, of course, because they're magic and they're kind of like immortal beings and they're like two of the most popular characters in the MCU right now. So perfect. Put them in a book together. It's the Scarlet Witch and Loki issue, and I'm here for it. The end of the past couple of issues, we were introduced to the clone of Wanda's father, whose name is Joseph. He's not Magneto, but he's kind of Magneto. If Magneto was hot and he looked kind of younger and had long white hair, so he's also in this book now. He's a new supporting character that we're playing with. And we'll talk about him in a minute, but before that, we do have kind of like the opening of this book which were in Jotunheim, and it's just kind of Wanda, like, intruding on Loki and their domain, and you're like, this is kind of fun, you know, look at these two cool people dressed to the nines, looking like they're having a great time, about to engage in whatever battle is about to take place, who knows what it is, but we cut to something that happened hours earlier, where Wanda is working with Joseph, they're fighting some weird goblin creatures in some dimension, and this is just kind of like, not, not like, you know, fill the page and just like, we have to get a couple pages out there, but it's very interesting to take a moment to let Wanda reflect on the death of her father, because like in current continuity, Magneto's still, you know, MIA. Where is he? I don't know. X-Men's a whole other ball game I don't want to get into. I haven't been caught up on it. But Joseph's like, look, I, I know it's not easy to see me, and I appreciate you letting me find my place in this place. Like, it's been very easy to figure out who I can become here. And she's like, yeah, I get that. Everything's hard. Like I've, I've dealt with issues like this before too. Sometimes you just got to find the right synergy and connectivity to find your place in a new reality. As they're just having their continued conversation, somebody walks through the last door and talks to Darcy. It is a mountain giant. Is that what we're saying? Yes. A mountain giant from Jotunheim. His name is Arkin. And he is, you know, just a tall, big boy. He came to the last door looking for Wanda. And he's just complaining about Loki. Because Loki won't let him lead his people. His people are very, like, slaughtered. And they were, like, destroyed. Because we reference War of the Realms. Where a lot of the mountain giants got hurt and killed. So there's few of them left. But Arkin's like, look, I may not be, like, the best fit to rule, but, I, like, it's kind of like my birthright as, like, a cousin to Loki to, like, lead my people, and, and they won't let me lead. So I just kind of want to know if you can help me persuade them into letting me become the leader of the mountain giants and all that. And Wanda's like, well, I mean, it is Loki's realm, but I don't know. I do kind of want to see them, you know freeze up a little bit so sure I'll help you and I'm not going to do it alone so Joseph comes on a mission to Jotunheim and he is fighting like a big weird shark scorpion frost giant monster meanwhile we just cut to the throne room which we saw at the beginning of the book which is just Loki and Wanda having a fun conversation if you were to tell me that like in 2023 Two of the best written characters in Marvel Comics would be Loki and Scarlet Witch. I wouldn't believe you. But I, I think between this book for Wanda and between this book, Immortal Thor, and the Loki book, Loki has been getting a lot of really interesting stuff happening with them too. And it's all very like ambiguous and androgynous for Loki. Like I feel like we're finally honing in on that aspect of their character. Where it's like, they could be anything. We've called them the god and goddess in recent weeks for this character. And that's very exciting to see. So this is just Wanda yelling at them for a minute. And Loki's like, yeah, I don't, like, what do you think this is? You think that guy can lead? He's a little goofball. But hey, if you think you can help him lead, be my guest. If if you wanna if you wanna like best me in a duel, I'll do it with you. And it's like, 
all right, name the weapon. I'll fight you, Loki. What are we doing here? And he's like, well, since you enabled this like truth spell when you walked into like my area, why don't we use the truth as a weapon? So we'll have like a battle of honesty and acceptance and all that stuff. You're like, that's so interesting. So it's going to be Loki and Wanda conversing about each other and themselves in a battle of honesty. And you're like, okay, neither of them can lie, so how are we going to do this? And I won't explain every single word that is said from either party, because what we'd be here all day. But it's just so perfectly executed. It is drawn like the two of them are dancing in this like empty space, just using their history and their collective history and their individual history as this weapon of like, who are we supposed to be? How are we? So you hear them both talk about like, their intense birth and like what their lineage is what they don't know about themselves the weird history between their brothers the weird history between their fathers which when you really think about it you have two of like the not best dads of the marvel universe you have magneto and you have odin two people who are very very set in their old school ways and have been portrayed as villains countless time over so as the two are dancing, they start talking about their like their histories, and the smiles slowly creep off their faces where the two of them are like, we've died countless times between the two of us. Our families fear us and don't respect us for certain aspects. Our histories are to lead us down a dark and brutal path that will alter the course of reality and, per and perhaps change everything as we know it. And that's when Loki reveals like, their upcoming fate because they they wanted more they made themselves the god of outcasts and i think they're still currently like the god of stories so they know like taking this mantle has put like a sword over their head that at any moment could fall and, and strike them down from this place but if they play this role of being like this surveyor of like peace for like those who didn't have a god to believe in before perhaps they can become a hero in, in some aspect like that a very interesting tragic story just to throw into there and wanda's like i get that i i have been in so many terrifying places that are very like that some of the battles i've seen i always wonder how i'm going to come out unscathed from them and then she see she's still got scython in like her body too so it's like these are two beings that you're like, there is some connective tissue between the two of them. There's there's not like a huge shared history, but they're two beings that you understand like how the larger Marvel Universe and their individual family in the universe is like, there's a weapon here that is unpredictable and deadly and trying to play the hero might lead to their downfall. And that's like a very fascinating thing to explore. And it just becomes like these two kind of like seeing... We have a more shared connection than we thought. There is something about us that will probably cross again and our lives will come over. And sometimes we're judged and sometimes we do the right thing. And there's something in there. There's like a true kinship we can find in there. And right when they're like getting super close and Loki's drawn a little more feminine than like the more masculine scenes we saw at the beginning of the issue. They're about to kiss and Wanda pulls back. But she's like, yeah that is our tragedy like we will never be that because you loki will never let yourself be the person we are in this room now you will never let yourself be the vulnerable intimate truthful person that i'm speaking to at this moment we could find love and i could see us nurturing that love having it grow in time but that would mean being truthful to yourself and that is somebody you will never be and loki's like you know yeah i yield all right you talked me out of it wanda Arkin, you can lead the, the mountain giants. I don't care. Like, the, if you'll run into the ground, go ahead. Not my business anymore. I mean, oh, those couple of pages, that is just some of the best stuff on Marvel shelves right now. Like, I, I'm just blown away that, again, Steve Orlando's like, let's take a minute to talk about the weird connective tissue between these two, how tragic it could be, and how Wanda just has the slight edge up because she can allow herself to be truthful about her faults in a more realistic setting than Loki ever would. Insanity. I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe the book about the two magic people is just them talking about how messed up their lives are. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I cannot believe we're doing that. 
it's so cool. He's like, all right, Arkin, go lead. See how long you can keep the throne. I don't give a shit. And then Eric, or I guess Joseph, <laughs> like, maybe, I don't know. Joseph kills the beast. Use fight. He's like, uh, Wanda, can we go now? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do now. So they head back to Lock Kill. He's covered in blood, and she cleans him up, and it kind of goes into like a nice conversation, just to kind of like catching up because their conversation was interrupted by Arkin and the Loki stuff. So he's like, I'm still trying to figure out the man I want to be. I've been used for so long to become something I don't know. I don't know. And then Wanda also like kind of like brings up when she saw Polaris, which was a couple issues back, how neither of them were really ready to talk about the loss of their father. And maybe that was just like something they could have bonded over, but neither were willing to bridge that gap. So now she's trying to make amends in another way. You know, Joseph's not like, you know, the father she never had where she could confess her sorrows to. She just wants to help a man who needs help. I appreciate that. It's pretty cool. Wrap up time. Wanda and Darcy just have like a little bit of dinner. And she's like, yeah, Joseph's had his battles. He's had his demons. There's been so many voices in his ear. Uh, he isn't our prisoner, though. We're going to keep him okay and figure out what happens. And that's when we <laughs> learn <laughs> Joseph is evil. He's working for Hexfinder, the new... Newish? Villain? Is, is Hexfinder like a character that existed before? I don't know. She just killed like a warlock guy who was wearing like a stupid mask. And she's like, all right, thanks for working with me, Joseph. I'm going to go kill the Scarlet Witch because it's, it's open season on witches, baby. Cool. Hexfinder, great name for a character. Another great, sleek, cool design. The costuming, again, for this book, it's unparalleled. Every costume for these new characters rocks. This book's fantastic. Just give it a minute to see Loki and Wanda talk and have it just be like, here's every supporting character just having their moment. Look at this, like the quiet intimacy that Wanda never gets. My goodness. This is special. I really don't think we will ever see the likes of this kind of Wanda book again because I don't know how patient people are going to be for it. Like, it is this new era of Wanda Maximoff content where she's a popular character in the movies and now the comics are allowing her to experience the type of stability she never had before. It's very nice. And even Loki, a character I've never really connected to, I'm finding something new about them to enjoy. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like, this is interesting. This is good stuff. And Hexfinder, what could that be? I don't know. It could be interesting. I hope it's interesting, at least. Looks really fun. Best book at Marvel, and I'll stand by that until proven otherwise. So, Scarlet Witch issue number eight. I am going to give a 10 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.